In this lecture, I want to show you how you can use the count a function together with the index function to get dynamic variable ranges, and also how you can use the match function to match for or to look for blank or non-blank cells. So this might come in handy if you're doing other types of lookups and you need that functionality. Now, this spreadsheet might look familiar to you because it's Mike Gervin's spreadsheet. This was a video that he published, I think it was yesterday. It was in response to uh, Michael Diamond's question. He showed two different versions of doing this. He concentrated on the formula that was provided by Bill Sissis. It's a very, very neat, elegant formula. So I do recommend that you check it out. I find it to be a very smart way of using the match function. Once Mike posted this, we talked about alternative versions of doing this. He mentioned that I do a video on the count A version. So that's what I'm doing. First of all, because it's Sunday, so we can have some Sunday Excel fun. And second of all, I thought the match part of this formula might come in handy because if you're looking or matching for blank cells, you need to tweak the formula a little bit. It's not the usual logical approach. The problem here that we're trying to solve is that we want to get a formula in here that says basically this. So this is the goal of the formula. We have items, we have sub items. Here are the descriptions of our main items. So basically for each single sub item, we want to have the description of the main item from here, but also we want to count how many sub items there are. And we want to put that in front of every single sub item. Two formulas that came to my mind the moment I saw this was count A and VLOOKUP. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use right here. And normally I split my formulas. I don't go about it all at once because then I will never come up with the right formula. So I did the easy part first and that was the VLOOKUP. We do need a formula that goes from here all the way to the end, but I normally start writing my formulas on a cell where I'm going to get a result and then I copy it up and down. I'm going to start with VLOOKUP and we're going to be looking this up. So whenever I am at a cell like this, I want to go one up, one behind. So I want to look this up and I'm looking it up here. I'm going to fix this range with F4. I need the second column and then I need it to be a full match, so either false or a zero. Okay, so that's fine. Now let's bring this down. Here we get errors, obviously, and here it works again because it looks this up in here. Now what I do normally is to go and update my formula on one of these errors to make it work. And then again, I copy it up and down. How do we get rid of the errors? Basically, we want this VLOOKUP to run only if there is text here, if there is a value here. Otherwise, what we could say is that just take the cell above me, take the result of the cell above me if this cell results in an error. I'm gonna say if, now I'm writing for this one, so basically if this cell above me does not equal to nothing, so basically it equals to something, then do your VLOOKUP thing, otherwise give me the cell above me. Okay, so that works. So let's pull this down here. But now notice this part. That's the part that I don't want to have anything. I want it to be empty. So here I also need to make a correction that if this is nothing, then give me nothing. Otherwise go and evaluate if there's something in the left side above me. Let's add this part. If this cell right here equals to nothing, then nothing. Otherwise, do your thing. That works out as well. So now I think the formula is gonna work. So let's go from all the way up to the bottom. Now we need to get the count. Now that I've done this, I've realized one important thing. And the important thing is that my driver cell is basically this one, this row. That's the driver one because these ones ultimately equal to this cell. What this means is that 
with my count a function, whatever function I use, I only need to end up with the number in this row. So I need a four here, I need a two here, and then I need a six here. I don't care about the other cells because of this part of this formula that I say, if this is equal to nothing, then just copy the cell above me. How do we get this? Now I use the count a function. The difference between count a and count is that count a also counts text. I do need count a because I am doing my count here and this is text. Now the thing with the count a is that it skips blank cells, right? So if I have, let's say count a this range, I get four, skips the blank cell. What I want is that this range is obviously different sizes. So when I'm moving down with my formula here, I want this range to change its size to maybe become like this or become like this or become like this. It doesn't really matter if the blank cell is there, but ultimately I want the size of my count a part to change. Two formulas that come to my mind that help me with that. One is the offset function and the other is the index function. Generally, when I have to decide between the two, I go with index because the offset function is volatile. One great thing about index, if you're familiar with index and match, you know that index returns the value in a cell unless you write it before or after a column like this one. If I write a formula like index here and index here, the result of this index is a cell reference. So this would return, let's say B7, and this other index would return, let's say B10. It does return a cell reference if I write it before or after the column. So I'm going to use the index function to get the first cell reference, and then I'm going to use the second index function to get the last cell reference. Let's start with our first cell reference. I'm writing this in front of this one first, and then we can test it in front of these ones. I can highlight my range to be only these two, because this is something that they all have in common. So I can have an empty cell and a non-empty cell. So that's a good trigger to say, I have come to the top of a new range. Okay, and when I drag this down, so I'm not gonna fix these, when I drag these down, they're gonna move with me. What am I matching for? Well, I wanna match for either the empty cell or the non-empty cell. Let's try to match for an empty cell. How do we do that? My logical approach was to use this, right? And then, my match range is here, and I'm looking for actually an exact match because I want it to be empty. So one more bracket and leave. So I get a one, and one necessarily is not a good thing with the count a function because it counts your errors as well. So let's have a look under evaluate formula to see what we get. You see, it results in an error. So when the count a function is counting your errors, it gives you one. So it doesn't like this syntax. What we can do is we can create a special range for the match function that checks if the cells are empty or not. And we can do that using the index function. If I wrap this up in another index and I check are these equal to nothing? So are they empty? Then check this out because row number is a must in the index function. It's not optional. I have to put in the Excel separator, but I don't necessarily need to fill it up. And I'm gonna close this. I have made this my lookup range. What do I get? Let's press F9. I get true and false true, empty, false, not empty. So it's matching this in there, it's not finding this, right? So what I need to actually look for is to look for a true or a false. So I'm just gonna control Z to go back. Now, if I want to match for the empty cell, I can do true. If I wanna match for the non-empty cells, I will do false. In this case, let's match for the non-empty cell. So I'll write false here. 
I get a one. So now let's just check, is this a legit one or an error one? It looks good because it's doing index B6, B7, two, it's moving two down. So it's realized where the false is and it's giving me B7 back. So that's exactly where I wanna start. My starting point looks good. Now I wanna get my ending point. My ending point is gonna be another index. And now I'm gonna look for starting this range all the way down. I'm gonna fix the last cell, not the first cell. So let me just take that away because I want this range to move down with me and always look for the first blank cell. Now, if you have a lot of data, you don't need to pull it down until the end of your data set. What you can do is pull it down to the maximum number of sub items that you can have inside the items. So let's say if the maximum is 20, then just pull it down 20 cells. Now I'm gonna match. This time I'm gonna, I wanna get the blank cell, so I'm gonna match for true. And I'm gonna do the index thing again and make sure the ranges are, are the same. So basically that's what we want. Again, I'm just gonna copy and paste this here and check if they're equal to nothing and respect the next argument. Just need to leave it empty. And I do want a full match here. Let's make sure we have the brackets right. That closes this part. This last bit should close down my count A. I get four, that looks right. So let's copy this. This one hopefully gives me a two. That's fine. Now let's look at this one. That gives me a one. Wrong, why? Can you see the problem here? It's with this part because look at this. Let's just evaluate this till we get to the last match. Right here, it's looking for a true inside all the false values. So I'm here, it's looking for the next blank cell. It's restricted to here, there are no blank cells. So it's gonna give an error here. Okay, and ultimately it's gonna count this error again. So that's the bad one, not a good one. What can we do to fix this? Well, there is a less elegant way to solve this and maybe a more elegant way of solving this. One is that we extend the original range to just one extra. That extra obviously has to be blank, right? So then that should work. I'm just gonna hold down control and paste these. You see, that works. But that's not really the elegant approach because I mean, someone could come in and type in data here or just write some text here. Better is, let's go back to our 20 and make an exception for that error. So the error happened during the match, right? When it did this match, it didn't find anything. That's where the error happened. And that's exactly where we can write our if error function. So if the result of this is an error, then what should it do? Well, then we should do another type of match. What we can do, because we only have values here and they're all gonna be false, we can look for the last false. So we're gonna look for the non-empty cell and we're gonna do, not bracket, comma, we're gonna do our index thing again, the same range. So let's just copy this part again. I'm just gonna copy this too. Now we don't want a zero though, because zero means give me the first false and that's gonna be here. I don't want that. I want the last false. So that means I have to use either one of these and they can be a bit confusing. I, I mix them up actually all the time, but basically this less than means give me the largest value that is less than or equal to my lookup value. So in this case, it means give me the last cell, the last value. So I need the one here. 
now let's check the brackets. That's this bracket. That's my if error bracket. I need another bracket and another one for the count A. Let's just paste these here. That looks good. Let me just do a quick test that if I only have one here, let's just delete this. Just wanna make sure that they work, that's fine. If I only have one here, that's one as well, good. So let's just go back. Last step is to combine these formulas together. So I'm gonna do that here. Now this is my main formula, right? So I'm gonna copy this, paste it here. These cell references are fine. This one, I need to bring it back to here. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in my count A formula. So let's copy this whole thing. Press escape to go out and I'll paste it here, but where do I paste it? So I'm saying if B7, if this one is nothing, give me nothing. Otherwise, if this one is something, do your thing, your really lookup thing. So that's exactly where I need my count A. So it has to give me the count A first, and then I need an and here. Then I wanna say in space quotation marks and do your VLOOKUP thing, press enter. Now I'm gonna bring it up and bring it all the way down and it looks great. This is just an alternative to this problem. I am sure there are many different ways of solving this. So if you do come up with other ways, please post these. It makes me always learn new things when I see different approaches used for the same problem. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to watch Mike's video here as well.